This is KPIX Eyewitness News Nightcast. Good evening, Topping Nightcast. We're just a step away from final action on earthquake relief money from Sacramento. A package of earthquake relief bills comes up for a final vote in both houses of the legislature in the morning. After a day of committee meetings, the Assembly and Senate have agreed on 12 bills, including a quarter cent increase in the sales tax. Not as much as some lawmakers want, but it's the only way to get the money flowing fast. Transfer the money from the relief fund to the... This package represents a good start. When we come back in January, if we find out that there are other needs or other programs that are not being addressed, then at that time we have the opportunity to uh, uh, come up with any additional uh, revenues and appropriations to fund those programs. Everybody. Governor Duke Mason says he'll sign the package early next week. Here are the highlights of that package. Increase the state sales tax one quarter percent through the next year. Provide emergency compensation for quake victims. Strengthen bridges and other structures to make them safe in an earthquake. And give tax breaks to people who suffered property damage in the earthquake. Tonight, work crews on the Bay Bridge are taking another significant step on the road to repair. They are installing the first of several steel beams that will bridge the gap and provide support for the two decks. Caltrans still says the bridge will reopen by Thanksgiving. To accomplish that, crews will be working around the clock. Well, the loss of the Bay Bridge hasn't just changed the commute to and from work. It has drastically changed San Francisco's nightlife. Doug Murphy reports from the streets of what used to be called, before the earthquake, one of America's best party towns. The Broadway Strip. In a body way, its pulsating lights show the heartbeat of the city. But tonight, its once bustling streets were nearly barren. Live show on stage right here. Come on in. No cover charge here, folks. The true barometer here comes from the Barkers, like 25-year veteran Bill Steinway. This is like death warmed over out here. There's just not a lot of people out here. 7 o'clock at night on a Friday night. You ever seen it this slow? Not this slow, no. The lack of tourists and convention ears is hurting, and at the Washington Square Bar and Grill, another group's missing. The biggest hit uh, negatively has been from the East Bay. We always knew we had a lot of East Bay people, but I don't think most of us really understood how important East Bay people uh, were to our business. Depending where you look, business is off 10 to 70 percent. Compared to normal, Union Street for the third Friday was a ghost town, and Puffin's Jewelry is feeling it. It's quiet. Really quiet. Down by what? Around 40, 50 percent. Maybe. But there was a sign of life tonight. Washington Square had its biggest crowd since the quake. And maybe San Francisco finally said, we're tired of staying home and worrying. We're going to come out and have a good time. Yeah, do you hope it continues? We think it may continue, and we very much hope so. But also back tonight were some folks from out of state, and these four who took the ferry over from the East Bay. The people that ventured out tonight and gave it a try had one message. If you've ever wanted to enjoy the city at its quietest and its calmest, and get a seat in just about any restaurant in town, come now. In San Francisco, Doug Murphy, Channel 5, Eyewitness News, Nightcast. It's one way to get in without a reservation. The Embarcadero Freeway in San Francisco was so badly damaged by that earthquake that it will not reopen until next June at the earliest. Now, many people who live and work near the freeway say they want it torn down before it falls down. Sandra Stricker reports. Department of Transportation says it will take up to six months to decide whether the Embarcadero Freeway should be torn down. To people who work in office buildings overlooking the freeway, that's too long to wait. This is not good construction. It's too dangerous and it's too close to too many people. In June of 1986, San Francisco voters rejected a proposal to tear down the Embarcadero Freeway. Back then, the argument was, if it isn't broke, why fix it? Now that it is broken, the question in people's minds is, do we really want to fix it? Let's look at it this way. Why not finish the job that Mother Nature started? Maybe she was telling us something. Shored up by thick beams of wood lashed to its concrete pillars, the Embarcadero is considered safe to walk under at some intersections. The pace of people commuting to the ferry is quick. I told him, I said, geez, you know, he reminds me of the Cypress. Let's hurry up and get out of here. Some commuters say they miss the Embarcadero's convenience, and they hope it can be restored. I assume that uh, because of what's happened, they'll uh, 
make sure that uh, very strict um, rules are placed with regard to the building of such structures, and so I don't think that um, it would be necessary to tear it down. And as for construction crews working under the freeway, they claim it isn't any more dangerous than any place else. Everyone here in this city is taking a risk just by, by staying here. You know, we're, it, you're, this dragon here doesn't fly, that's all. You know, we're all here living with a dragon, and, and someday it's going to strike. In San Francisco, Sandra Stricker, Channel 5 Eyewitness News Nightcast. There are also fears about the walkway between Oakland Coliseum BART Station and the Coliseum itself. As a precaution, the walkway will be closed this weekend to people taking BART to the Rolling Stones concert. Engineers say the quake-damaged structure just can't support a big crowd. A shuttle bus will be provided to take concert goers from the BART Station to the Coliseum. By the way, the Stones have just donated a half million dollars to the Red Cross Disaster Relief Fund. Health officials in Alameda County are trying to prevent an outbreak of tuberculosis. They spent all day testing homeless people who have been staying in the Oakland Tech High School emergency shelter. That's because a woman who was there right after the earthquake was later found to have TB. When we find a case, especially in very closed and crowded quarters, uh, we have to take this very seriously and do absolutely everything that we can uh, to ensure that anyone who may have been exposed is identified. Is there a likelihood that this one person could have infected a number of people? Well, I think it's, it's probable. Preliminary results of today's test won't be known for three days. Meanwhile, the Alameda County Health Department is offering free TB tests on Monday and Tuesday. Anyone who was at the Oakland Tech Shelter between October the 18th and 27th is urged to get one. The last of the earthquake homeless moved out of Marina Middle School today, leaving the school to the students. Families were taken to the Presidio and single men to a Red Cross shelter on Polk Street. The Red Cross says the shelter was closed because most quake refugees who had been staying there were able to find other places to live. And a building that was home to more than 160 people was torn down today. The Hotel Anglo, south of Market in San Francisco, one of several residential hotels damaged in the quake. The South of Market Council says if the city does not pay for repairs to the hotels, there could be more homeless people on the street. And we have one more earthquake story for you tonight. A shaker measuring 4.3 hit the Sierra about 20 miles south of Lake Tahoe this morning. No injuries or damage, but people in Reno and Carson City felt it. An American oil drilling ship is capsized in a typhoon off of Thailand, and 97 sailors are missing tonight. The 351-foot sea crest was lost about 270 miles south of Bangkok. Search planes have found no sign of survivors. The ship is owned by Unical Oil of Southern California. Environmentalists trying to keep oil rigs off of the West Coast may have received some ammunition today. A scientific panel says not enough is known about the potential for disaster. The National Science Fund says the available information just isn't adequate and won't be for some time. Still ahead on Nightcast, the fight over that new stadium for the Giants heats up. And the baby girl who somehow survived after being submerged in an icy river for 45 minutes. And TV evangelist Jim Baker finds out how cold life can get on the way to prison. Some nasty name calling today as San Francisco's downtown ballpark proposal gets closer to a vote. Mayor Agnos accused ballpark opponents of playing dirty. He says they're lying to voters, claiming falsely the project would take millions from AIDS patients, the homeless, and from earthquake safety. This is the one that went to the voters, and it's a sleazy piece that is designed to fool people. The mayor is really off base. He is the one who should be correcting the falsifications he has made in this campaign. Well, the true test will come next Tuesday when Proposition P goes to the voters. A fiery chain collision on Highway 101 near San Francisco International today left one person dead and six hurt. The Highway Patrol says the accident was triggered by a northbound car that stopped on the freeway. A Jeep ran into it, then a big rig crashed into both cars, then a fire broke out. A woman in the Jeep was burned to death. Six other people, including the truck driver, suffered minor injuries. In Grand Junction, Colorado, an amazing story of survival. A car plunges into a river, killing three people, but a baby, barely a month old, is pulled from the icy waters alive. Little Samantha Venable 
submerged in the water for 45 minutes. There was almost no hope she would survive, but tonight she continues to beat the odds. It was surprising, of course, to see her alive uh, after having been submerged for that length of time. And um, I think that's really where the, uh, the miracle uh, lies in this case. And the miracle continues. Samantha's condition has been upgraded now from critical to serious. Fallen evangelist Jim Baker is at the federal prison where he could be spending the next 45 years. Baker was transferred from a prison in Alabama to snowy Rochester, Minnesota. He was let off of the plane in handcuffs and taken to the federal prison system's medical center. But Baker will be a prisoner there, not a patient. Last month he was convicted of fleecing his flock out of millions. Still to come on this Friday evening of Nightcast, Wayne Walker with highlights of the Warriors' season opener against the Suns in Phoenix. And Brian Sussman with late word on how much sun we'll see this weekend in the Bay Area. I can't believe it. Kate was just noticing your... You came back uh, from your days off with a, a tan, but it's getting deeper and deeper. And we're a little worried because you never leave the building. How do you do this? <laughs> well, it's a new brand of makeup. <laughs> you change makeups, it's a little darker, and oh. uh, these things happen. Oh, I thought well. you had a hotline to the sun and no, that's tanning I don't tanning know what the deal is. Uh, well, I thought maybe they put the sunroof in the weather center, but they haven't. Huh? That's, that's in the next contract. Yeah. Oh, we'll oh. have that arranged in the next contract. But in the meantime, how about the next forecast? We've got a weekend coming. You want to make your plans, you come to the right place. For tonight... We have temperatures that are dropping into the 50s. We have a 61 outside the KPIX Weather Center door. Winds are currently calm. The high downtown San Francisco today was warm, 77. Here's the latest satellite picture tonight. High pressure remains in command, but it is weakening. We're starting to see a minor return to the fog and low cloud in this coast side. And as a result of that marine air influence, temperatures tomorrow will not be as warm as they were today. Here you go for tomorrow, 73. San Francisco, Oakland, and San Jose. Those temperatures are all above average for this time of the year. And you'll notice lows tomorrow morning will not be as chilly as they have been either. Snow tomorrow in the Great Lakes. That means, get this, parts of Upper Michigan have seen four feet of snow since Tuesday, and there will be some snow falling in the higher elevations of the central Rockies. For us, a couple of cold fronts putting the squeeze play on this high-pressure cell. It's possible that the storm door could reopen middle of next week. For right now, let's just say some clouds, but keep that in the back of your mind as you watch weathercast throughout the weekend here on KPIX. Here's my forecast for tonight. Calling for patchy coastal fog, otherwise clear. For tomorrow, we're calling for another tone darker on the old Sussman skin as we continue to uh, change makeups. Winds will be from the northwest 10 to 20, and that five-day outlook calls for some clouds Sunday through Wednesday. Can't rule out the possibility of rain, but we'll update you Roland Galvan will be here doing just that. And you're a leading candidate for the George Hamilton Trophy, tanning trophy. Why not? Yes. <laughs> Marvelous. Wayne's going to be here in just a moment, and he'll tell you about the two new managers of Major League Baseball. Also, Wayne will have highlights of a busy opening night in the NBA for the Warriors. It wasn't much to write home about. If you thought you felt an aftershock a few minutes ago, you were right. It was felt in Oakland, Berkeley, San Leandro, San Francisco, and on the peninsula, we have learned. Uh, we didn't feel it here at Channel 5. We're looking into it. As soon as we have more information, we'll pass it along. All right, well, Wayne is right here right now with the Warriors opening night. Yeah, they felt a little shock down in Phoenix tonight. We're a little shocked down there. If you want to look on the bright side of tonight's Warriors games against the Suns, consider these two items. There are still 81 games left to play and the Gorilla remains head and fur above all other mascots in the NBA. The Suns made a zoo out of Golden State's opener, 136-106. Kevin Johnson swipes Manute Bowles' pass here and streaks for a deuce. The Warriors had 17 turnovers in the first half, trailed by nine at the intermission. Both Uwe Blop and Tim Hardaway started for Golden State. It's Blop to Hardaway here in the third quarter, but then it's Tom Chambers to Dan Marley and Don Nelson for Paris to clear his bench. And wasn't happy at all with what he saw tonight. Shrunas Marshallona scored 19 points in his NBA debut all in the second half. The Lithuanian knocks down this jumper off the glass. By that time, though, the outcome was no longer in doubt. Watch Johnson, the former Cal star, bolt past Hardaway and over Marshallona. And keep your eye right there on the right baseline. 
the gorilla is just about as entertaining as KJ. The Warriors lost in five games to Phoenix in last season's Western Conference semifinals. Rick Juan has more on tonight's season opener. And Manute Bowl plays center. Whether it was a case of opening night jitters or the Suns being just too good, the bottom line was the Warriors suffered their worst opening night loss since the team moved to the Bay Area. We had a lot of people come off the bench and for whatever reason they seem really timid or nervous and I've never had a team do that um, so this is all new to me I understand a rookie you know like Hardaway uh, maybe some nerves maybe not playing to his strengths or whatever but um, you know not the veterans I felt that I was a little tight uh, I was off balance on some of my shots uh, you know I just didn't feel feel right but I, I felt that they still should have went in we got a First game jitters, you know, I think that's normal, but, uh, you know, not, not for 30 points. I can't count 30 points. So the Warriors opened the season the way they ended last season, with a disappointing loss at Phoenix. But if there's any consolation, it's just one game, and there's at least 81 more to go. In Phoenix, Rick Kwan, Channel 5, Eyewitness News. And now we'll bounce through some of the other hardwoods in the NBA. At the Palace tonight, the Pistons' Isaiah Thomas hoisted the team's NBA championship trophy. The players were presented their rings, and then Detroit clipped the Knicks by a score of 106-103. Dennis Rodman, the worm, they call him, Kate, the worm, with a fine cross-under move here. Larry Bird showed no ill effects from uh, the heel operations, which sidelined him most of last season. Bird gets the roll here as the Celtics rip Milwaukee 127-114. Number 33 had 32 points, but check out how Bird and Kevin McHale work to give and go. McHale drops home a pair of his 21 points. Michael Jordan already in mid-galaxy form. You'll see two Jordan rim rattlers against Cleveland here. All MJ did tonight was pour in 54 points, including the basket that sent the game into overtime, and the Bulls won it in OT, 124-119. The Lakers took care of Dallas, 102-94, a vintage Magic Johnson feed to Michael Thompson. Magic had 20 points and a dozen assists. You now see time left in the first half at the Salt Palace. Watch John Stockton maneuver for the buzzer-beating three-pointer. The Jazz down Denver, 122-113. Carl Malone had 40 points and 16 rebounds. On the scoreboard, Houston lost to the Clippers. The Rockets are in Oakland tomorrow night. Portland dusted the Kings. Seattle topped the Minnesota Timberwolves in their first-ever game. 36 points for Reggie Miller as Indiana rocked the Hawks in Atlanta. Last year's expansion teams, the Heat and the Hornets, each suffered 20-point losses at home. Turning out of baseball, John McNamara has received a shot to manage his sixth big league team. The Cleveland Indians today hired McNamara. You're seeing him as Boston skipper, arguing a call the night Tony La Russa became the A's manager. McNamara had also managed the A's, Padres, Reds, and Angels. Oakland third base coach Renee Lochman had been in time uh, in the running for that Cleveland job. And Lou Pinella will now be running the show in Cincinnati. As we reported last night, Pinella today officially became the Reds manager. Pinella had two stints as the Yankees manager, but then again, everyone except Brian Sussman has managed New York uh, you know, <laughs> at least once or twice. That's very And Brian, you know, your, your, your time could still come. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Thanks, Wayne. Yeah. Uh, time on that uh, aftershock. It was at 11.16, about, uh, what, 10 minutes ago? And um, we don't have an intensity on it yet, but it was felt Oakland, Berkeley, San Leandro, San Francisco, the peninsula. Also, we're now hearing pe from people in Walnut Creek who felt it. Um, certainly got a lot of people's attention. No damage, no injuries. You know, finally, before the quake and all those aftershocks, friends gathering for lunch in the marina was commonplace. Since the big shake, luncheons like that have been but a memory. But today, here on Marina Boulevard, there was a candlelight luncheon with all the trimmings in the garage of Paul and Gloria Crabe. We want to thank you for all the blessings you have given us and, and saving our home. And most of all, we pray for the people who are not as fortunate as ourselves. That's Gloria doing the praying. The guests, PG&E workers from all over the state. I was born in this neighborhood. I love it. I'll never leave. I want to help the people who have helped us. And so they did, heaping plates for the thank you luncheon for workers from Fresno, Bakersfield, Clovis, and Colinga. For them, it's been lots of long, hard days. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 14 hours, 14 and a half hours a day, seven days a week. Today, they were going home for the weekend, right after lunch. Let's eat! And so they did. 
They left with full stomachs, leaving Paul and Gloria Crabe with full hearts. That's a nice idea. A uh, really nice gesture, but they're only getting the weekend off. They'll be back on Monday and at it again. And we'll be here uh, during Barney Miller, or as long as it takes, to tell you more about the aftershock as soon as we have more information. And that's it for Nightcast. I'm Kate Kelly. Have a good weekend. I'm Dave McAlatton. Good night and good luck from all of us at Eyewitness News.